in this inner rocker feature line here. This is going to be the cut line just below the door. The next step for us for the process is to get this rear edge of the body skin established. Okay, so the back B pillar established, or the rod, the flat bar established for the B pillar, we can now come to the front here. We created that outward curvature for the door and established that this is going to be the shoulder line. So we ended up placing the shoulder line inward, the inch and three quarter, instead of out where we initially had it. Um, you kind of have to work back and forth between the two planes just to establish all your lines. Now, since we move that inward over there, this had to move in over here as well. And that meant doing a little bit of surgery on the Mustang cutting away the E pillar. Uh, we're going to be reconfiguring the post for the cab anyway, so this was in our way. This is where the cut line will be for the door, between the door and the front fender. Now, uh, we can't just weld this in place and bend it inward because this is a very straight line and we need to match up what we have on the, on the two-dimensional drawing. So I'll be working between the drawing, this area, and the stump just to get this shaped up properly and then we'll install it. So I'll just check this against the drawing and uh, the curve is just where we need it to be. So now we have to focus on the third dimension curve, the door profile curve. And just as before, we'll work our way up to it. And we'll match this up against the B pillar and see if the curvature is consistent with that and then we'll work the top in. Well, I got a little carried away and it was a little bit too far. I'm going to back it off a little bit. Sweep the bottom a bit. Okay, so now we can work on the top. Okay, so it looks pretty close. Let's head back over to the front of the car and see how well this piece fits. Now, I'm going to drop this down a little bit. And uh, I need to create a little more curve in this area here, as well as bring this down. So I'll head back over the vise, tweak this a little bit, and I'll come back. Should be the exercise when doing a project like this constantly running back and forth. Okay, I think we're just about where we need to be. That's looking really nice. I'm going to tweak the bottom a little bit and I think I'm going to start bending the top of this. Uh, I just need to figure a way to clamp this in such a way and we can bend this sharply here. Give it an initial bend. And we'll use a hammer to make sure that we don't overbend this. Okay, let me go test fit this on the car and uh, I'll probably back two or three more times. Tweak the bottom again. You really have to have a lot of patience when you're doing this kind of stuff. Can't rush. I want the bend to kind of soften out 
This is just a little bit too much. I want this to this radius to soften out a bit and then uh, bend more so at this point. So what I'm just looking at right now is where the cut line for the door is going to be. I just want to make sure that we are going to be in the right place. We don't want a cut line that's going to be over the hinges where you can see the hinges when you look through the gap. We want it to be just past the hinge or just ahead of the hinge, just ever so slightly. So when you look into that gap, you don't see anything. It's a nice clean seam down here. We will have to tip these in like this so that they can form towards there. And uh, at that point, we start framing the window. Okay, so what I'm using here is called a bevel square to establish the vertical cut line back here for the door. So this is also going to tip in it ever so slightly, and we're going to lean this piece of rod or piece of flat bar forward. And we'll have to do the same thing with the front over there. We'll have to take and lean that backward. You may have noticed I didn't cut all the way through. This is actually holding my piece for me. So we've made the adjustment. We'll have to turn it a bit because it did twist. But um, afterwards, we'll weld that up. Let's see the front one now. That's good right there. So now we're going to the distance up from the shoulder line. Cut that up. Okay, so we'll cut that off level, cut this one off level. Right there. And what I should do before it completely falls off is put a few tacks in these areas. So bit by bit, we're working our way upwards. We establish the rockers. We establish, first, we establish wheel arches. We establish the rockers. Now the door cut lines, the shoulder line, and now we're working into the window area. So this is the front, or the back edge of the front fender. And as for the drawing, this is going to extend up and around into the window, come back in the quarter window, and we'll have a line across here basically representing the top of the door. So what I was just doing was just double checking the bottom of the door, the width of the bottom of the door, the midsection and the top. And uh, it all corresponds to our drawing up on the wall there. So it's all set. Now I'm going to some 5 16 rod and bend up the window perimeter. First bend starts at 50 inches. And uh, mark this out. I'll go grab a die that matches the radius. We need to bend it on the left side of the line. Hmm, I wonder if this will work. So, I was using this piece of pipe the other day when we were doing the windshield perimeter, or the windshield uprights for the electric roadster. And, uh, it works very well as a, as a die when you're hammering things out. Clamp in the vise. Okay, let me just twirl this around without poking you guys in the eye. That's going to be the bottom back edge of the window. I think that angle is a bit too much. Then we need to measure up the next point. Now this one is much, much softer and I will have to do this by hand. Well, 
unless I can find something that's appropriate. See, we have rollers for wire, but I uh, don't really want to use it because it's not a consistent bend. So we are a little bit too big. So what I'm going to do is just bring that around. And bring this side around. Just tighten up on these bends. Kind of have to feel your way around it. Tighten up the bottom end a little bit more. Just don't want to kink it. It's easy to overbend it. And we'll open up the top one. So, like that. Making progress, guys. Once you bend something, kind of wants to maintain that. Is that a sign? So once you bend something, it kind of wants to maintain that that bent shape, and to unbend it without uh, making it appear as though you had bent it initially, it's quite difficult. I'm just gently feeding this wire through, just applying a bit of pressure, and pulling it around. So. What I want to do now is go check and see where we need to start bending the front. So we're just about there. One more bend. Uh, I've mentioned before that uh, you want to bend this rod in the same plane. You don't want it to turn into a pretzel. If you deviate too much from that plane. It'll, uh, just won't look right, and it'll never sit flat. In the glass, we need it to come up inside a particular crack. Okay, let's go fit this to the car and see how it looks. What I meant to say is let's fit this to the drawing on the wall and see if we need to make any adjustments. And so far, so good. All the lines are lining up. Okay, let's give this front A pillar ever so, so slightly a curve. Okay, one final bend. And this is going to return us back to the bottom wire. So before, I'm going to make sure we're in the same plane. Very good with the left arm. You see there, what I was talking about, our curve for our line, our rod, deviated from that straight plane. So I have to fix that. See how this looks. It should be very, very close. Look at that. Right on. You probably see better from back there how well it's lining up, but we are very, very close. Okay, guys, moment of truth time. Let's see how this fits. Set up there. 
and uh, line this up. Now I'm already seeing an issue, and that's this rod needs to be on the, in the inside of this rod needs to be on the inside of this surface of this flat bar here, and we have nothing to attach to. Now the other thing is we do live in a three-dimensional world, and if you locate this here, we have no thickness of the door, at least to the top of the door. So we need to move this inward three quarters of an inch. And doing that, we can apply or we can attach a piece of flat bar up here and uh, move this inward, attach this in the proper location. So let me get some flat bar, clamp it into place, and then we'll go from there. Well guys, what do you think of that? I think it just represents the cut line of the glass between the quarter glass and the door glass. So I uh, just wanted to outline that. But uh, yeah, with the shoulder line in place, the door cut lines established, the door installed and functioning, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. But we have this pretty much completed. It's uh, it needs to be final welded and metal finished, but uh, we can start working our way outwards from these jams out towards the skin now. It closes, closes like a factory door. So yeah, next time we're going to be tackling the fenders, get the fenders outlined, front and rear. Uh, we're going to look at that front structure, see what needs to be restructured and removed or uh, added so that we can create those big bubble fenders in the front, fat fenders. Once this side's roughed in, we'll uh, get the other side, that side roughed in. And uh, once both sides are done, then we can work both, end, both sides towards the middle and join everything in between and create, a, create the skeleton that we need. Thanks very much for watching. That's pretty much it for this video. Appreciate all the comments you guys uh, put down below and uh, we enjoy reading those. Take care.